Hey, what's happening, guys? Welcome back to the channel. This is an interview I did a bit back with Marco Zoror. He's been in a bunch of films, the From Dust Till Dawn series, Undisputed 3, which is an awesome fighting action film. He's been a stunt double for The Rock, and more importantly, a lifelong martial artist. I really enjoyed this interview. It was really interesting. I hope you guys enjoy it also. Hey, how are you guys? Excited <laughs> to be here. Thank you for, the, for this uh, invitation, man. Thank you for accepting. Tremendous honor. I'm a huge fan. Um, so, Marco, um, the first question, uh, how, how did you, like, even get into martial arts? Um, a lot of martial artists have different stories. Some were, like, bullied as a kid or, you know, but I want to know, like, how, how you got into it. Well, basically, uh, my mother, you know, was one of the first uh, female woman uh, martial artist in Chile. Mm-hmm. Uh, back in the day, um, she was a black belt in karate, uh, Goyo Ryu, mm-hmm. Goyo Ryu karate, and then you know she was she took she took me when I was a kid, just you know to with her when she was you know training. So I was like mm-hmm. very like I could barely walk, and I was in the dojo and all that. So wow, my connection with martial arts has been very 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 since I was born actually. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. really, what triggered my whole craziness about martial arts and what made me realize that this was the path that I want to follow in this life was when I saw Enter the Dragon of Bruce Lee. Wow. And it was really like, it's like a before and after, you know, like, Mm -hmm. and I saw, I was like eight years old or or six or seven, I don't even remember, but it was so powerful, you know, his energy, his charisma, his you know that I just knew that that's what I want to follow. That's that's really what I want to become as a as a human being. You know, and mm-hmm. and then I it starts my quest as a as a, my my way my trip. You know, in in this life with martial arts all the time mm-hmm. connected with that. And mm-hmm. and basically, you know, back in the day there was no YouTube. There was no access to a lot of information like today. You know, so it was a very Part of the, the time was just trying to find the inf- movies or books or it was very cool. You know, it was very, I remember, I'm never going to forget, you know, driving around and trying to look for schools in my country mm-hmm. that teach like Kung Fu and mm. blah, 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 you know. So it's like as a kid, you know, as a kid, how you want to mimic and imitate at the beginning mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and before you really start evolving and understanding the whole thing you know but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know it's uh, when when everything started that's amazing um usually anybody who starts something at a at an early age uh they usually turn out to be like amazing at it you know like someone like tiger woods with golf like four years old and uh you are so talented you're such a talented martial artist uh before we got on air um for the people listening i was telling marco that I don't even think, I mean, he's a big star, but I don't think he even gets half the credit he deserves. And, um, he's like really, really blowing up right now. Um, but you mentioned Bruce Lee, like he was an inspiration for me also growing up. Uh, Van Dam, I got into like jujitsu and mixed martial arts. I did that for like eight years. And, um, I, I love martial arts also. I don't really train, uh, as much anymore. I don't really have time. You know, I've been really busy with work and everything, but, um, what, um, what do you love the most about being a martial artist? You know, it's like, it's funny, man, but I, you know, for me, martial art is not just because you train. It's not because you do kicking or punching. It's just a way that you face life. It's just a way that you look at things. It's just a way that you face everything or any type of challenge you have in life. <laughs> It's a way of thinking. It's a philosophy. It's, you know, it's how you can apply this way of being into your whole life, relationship, whatever you do. You know, it's like I see this because I've been going through many stages in my life where, you know, it's maybe not about training and it's not about, you know, I always train. I never stop training by what I'm saying Sometimes, like in my back in in my country, you know, I develop my own supplement uh, company, or mm-hmm. you know, I'm cooking now. I'm, I'm I just switched my diet one year ago, and my life changed. And mm. I and I'm very into cooking now, and I'm like very excited about. So it's 
it's just finding the passion and finding being thankful of what you're doing, no matter what it is. I think that's what the most important thing that I kind of grab grab from martial art for my martial art experience and my mm-hmm. martial art. Um, uh, how do you say philosophy? You know about being mm-hmm. thankful, about understanding that all what we all we have is right now. There's no future. There's no mm-hmm. past. It, the only thing that it is is right now, and we gotta learn how to be appreciated and how to enjoy it. You know, and living in the moment, huh? Yeah, and that's I think that's the most thing that that that's the number one thing for me in martial arts. You know, mm-hmm. of what what I've learned and what I was able to you know take out of it yeah yeah definitely yeah that's awesome marco that's an awesome philosophy and like mindset and um i agree with you i think like all kids you know should get into some kind of sport or martial arts like it, it teaches you so much like discipline and like for me um i applied it to like my life you know um as far as like not quitting because you know like when you're sparring and you're put in, in a tough situation and, and you don't give up and push through and I think that like translates to like life. So that's what I got out of it. Um, but uh, so um, what have you trained in? How many different martial arts? Yeah, I started when I was a very young with, a, you know, karate. Then I did taekwondo. Then I switched to kung fu. I did many years, uh, you know, like a, like a fighting style of kung fu. Mm-hmm. Uh, not the wushu, not the traditional wushu. So it was like more like a Wing Chun kind of fighting style of kung fu in Chile. Did it have sparring? Yeah, a lot of sparring. Awesome. So I was really into sparring when I, you know, really into like, you know, go, actually, I was so crazy that I was go with my back, go into the schools and and try a class. But really, my objective was just to spar and to to test myself with the different. <laughs> different students it was you know it was funny i was a kid i was young and i was like damn man now i look at myself and i think (laughs) i can imagine me when i was 16 walking into a school right now and Mm -hmm. i'm like man i was crazy i don't know how i didn't get (laughs) you don't know how you like survived (laughs) yeah i was like man you know it's like crazy but well Mm -hmm. so yeah i was and then you know i did i I went back to uh, karate for a long time then I went back to Taekwondo, you know, when I was grown up already, like, no, you know, like 18 years old. Mm-hmm. I, I was invited for the national team of Taekwondo. So I did a big intense training there mm-hmm. as a part of the team. And then I just moved to Mexico. And in Mexico, I trained with a friend that um, it's a, he passed away, unfortunately, but he's a, a four time world champion of uh, point fighting. He was mm-hmm. very dynamic, very uh, a talented martial artist. His name was Roberto Perez, mm-hmm. and it was incredible. Like he was so good, and mm-hmm. with him, I started like doing more dynamic, like more acrobatics. I was already kind of very into, really into trying what you can't do, like mm-hmm. tr- challenging yourself all the time. It was more. T- for from combat and from sparring suddenly i start you know in trying to like learn pushing your body yeah like you know what it was like you know yeah you know you can fight whatever but mm-hmm. i cannot do this kick for example i cannot do this spin kick or i can't do a, a backflip why like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so i start i i i got obsessed with this thing that i wanted you know, to really make my body do things that it couldn't do before. So Mm -hmm. I was really, I went to deep studying into how human body works and Mm -hmm. human uh, physical performance and how to enhance speed and how to enhance power. Mm -hmm. And in back in the day, there was no, like I said, there was no YouTube, there was no access to a lot of information. So, Mm -hmm. and the only thing that I knew about Bruce Lee was his movie. Mm -hmm. Like basically there was no much information about him. So it's, for me it was very it was difficult now like it was harder now it's you got access you just youtube <laughs> youtube that's it you you know everything you want you need to know to get it going so mm-hmm. it's pretty cool 
So yeah, I start studying like high performance books of high athletes and like how the sprinters train, how the ping pong players play play for the reflex or for speed, and mm. and I start trying to understand different sports and different abilities to be able to apply it to my my training. Mm-hmm. So then my training became more as a personal uh, improvement instead of just trying to analyze fighting and combat and all that. You know, mm-hmm. it was it was, was transferring to that. So with Roberto Perez, that he was he was in, living in Mexico, much closer to the U.S., where they were having all these big tournaments of you know like the musical uh, forms and you know like point dynamic point fighting. <laughs> So we became really good friends and we started training together. And then we start trying like all these like 720s and butterfly twists and backflips and all this crazy stuff. And that's how really I got really into this acrobatic and this more like uh, uh, agile type of, you know, martial arts, you know. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Um, it's amazing of you, like thinking outside the box, like you mentioned, like ping pong and 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 going into like other sports and seeing what you could like take from their training and stuff. Like that's really intelligent of you. Um, there's like a really popular fighter right now. Um, you probably heard of him, Conor McGregor. He's in the UFC and he's big on like movement, you know, on 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 a human body, like you described, and and moving efficiently and and you know how to move his body. So. That's really cool. Um, so, Marco, um, you mentioned Bruce Lee, but um, it doesn't even have to be in, in martial arts. But, like, who who are your inspirations in life? Like, it could be acting or martial arts. Yeah, well, you know, Bruce Lee has been my big inspiration, man. I, he's just so strong that no, nobody else can, can come even close to what how he affect my life and how he, you know, really being my my – my mentor inspiration i don't know how you want to call it but mm-hmm. you know it's just it's just him man i don't have a big like someone that inspire me or i admire a lot of people and i really you know of their careers and their but i it's no like a, it's not like bruce in the level of bruce lee for me it's mm-hmm. like he was a, so powerful you know uh, in my life that I will not put another name next to him, though. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, he definitely was a uh, one of a one of a kind and amazing. Um, for me, it was Bruce Lee. Uh, I grew up watching Van Damme movies, and and like when I was training MMA, um, you know, I I stumbled across you and and like Scott Atkins, and you guys inspired me. Um, so, um, yeah, you guys definitely. Um, I, I think know, I, you, I know what you're saying. Okay, so. Uh, talking about movies, yeah, of mm-hmm. course I watch Van Damme movies and Jackie Chan movies mm-hmm. and all that. But but you know, yeah, for me it was Bruce Lee really the overall, the, overall like yeah, man, yeah, it's mm-hmm. like it was so powerful. Yeah, suddenly when Van Damme came and started doing the splits and mm-hmm. and, and kicking, yeah, I got crazy <laughs> to it. And I, and I and this is something that. I was very, very tight since I'm a kid. Like my hips were very, like I was not able to kick a roundhouse kick to the stomach without warming up like an hour and stretch. Wow. I man, trust me. Wow. Trust me. I actually, I'm working on, um, I want to upload a tutorial for stretching because I'm sure people will, in, will appreciate this. Mm-hmm. And you'll see, I don't have the, you know, I'm not a flexible guy, you know, even, even now, but I could, you know, it's surprising I, not to cut you off. You look extremely flexible. You're, you're like the way you move your bodies is like insane. Yeah. Well, but, but, you know, like, for example, I know people that they, without warming up, they do the splits all directions, you know, like front side, whatever mm-hmm. me, you know, I can, if I warm up, yeah, I'm almost there and mm-hmm. I can, yeah, do the split with just one technique, you know, the mm-hmm. front and the side and all that. But but it's not like these guys that I know some friends that are like they just they <laughs> can hold their leg up there. I you know this is not this is a genetic thing. It's like mm-hmm. it's not me, you know. Uh, but the way that I the flexible the how flexible I am right now that I can kick basically at any height and I could mm-hmm. you know pretty much have the technique that I have. Mm-hmm. I study about flexibility so much man because i was so tight it was <laughs> that the that's flexi- unbelievable the, yeah the flexibility that i have is just because of hard work and understanding 
and trying different techniques mm -hmm. and really like it worked for me. So I, that's why I wanted to share it. And, and I've been looking the time to do it and, and put it in, in the YouTube. Like, I've been uploading some stuff and, mm -hmm. you know, there's some diet stuff and tutorials and stuff like that. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward. I really want to like do this because I know that a lot of people can, can benefit from it, huh? benefit from it for sure, man, because it, mm -hmm. it was the only way that I was able to get more flexibility is mm -hmm. the only technique and the only type of training that really helped me out. So mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to put it up there, you know, for soon. Yeah. I think that that'll be a great idea. A lot of people will tune into that. Um, <clears throat> so Marco, um, so what, what opened the door, um, for, for Hollywood for you? Like how, how did this whole thing happen? Yeah, well, you know, first I left my country, you know, um, for like personal reasons. You know, I was not really, I was studying a career I didn't like. Mm -hmm. uh, basically because making movies and being in movies is something that is not even, back then it was not even a, a dream. Like it was impossible. You know, there's mm -hmm. no, didn't exist. There was, it was not a career possibility. It was not something that you even try to do. Right, mm -hmm. my country. So it just, I left my country for other reasons. You know, uh, I had a girlfriend in Mexico and I went, you know, to visit her. Then the thing didn't work out. And I stayed in Mexico because I met a friend uh, named Jose Luis Mosca, that is a martial artist and he's actor too, doing like soap operas and movies and stuff like that in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when I met him and I saw that he was actually doing movies and, and, and working, you know, I'm like, well, this is, this is something that it's real, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, you know, this is something that it's, I want to do this. So from that moment, yeah. I realized, yeah, I, I always follow my uh, Bruce Lee and, and he was my inspiration, but mm -hmm. He was Bruce Lee. He was mm -hmm. it was a Hollywood star. It was something that is totally unreachable, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. something that it was not even possible to dream with. Mm -hmm. But I, the thing that I trained so hard, and I, I, I didn't know for what. I, I, I was thinking, well, maybe I, I have to compete. Maybe, you know, all this training is for I'm going to dedicate to just compete in martial arts and and be a uh, be in tournaments and have a school or. It was cool. You know, I, I knew that my life was going to be related with martial arts somehow, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, what happened was that when I arrived to Mexico and I met Jose Luis and I said, well, this is, you know, he have a poster with kicking of a movie, you know, a, a, a movie poster with him with a kick. I'm like, wow, <laughs> it was so crazy. So I was like. So then I stay, I stay in Mexico and then I start working, you know, in whatever mm -hmm. uh, to try to stay there, you know, to try to, to, to be there. And, and I became friend with him. Then he offered me to be a part of a movie that he was doing, like a low budget video home movie. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's how I did my first movie that it was mm -hmm. like about Mexican mafia and video homes in Mexico, you know, like a... No kicking, no nothing, but mm -hmm. it was my first like time I think that I saw a camera, you know, mm -hmm. it's crazy. So it was from there, man, it never stopped. I was like, this is what I want to do. So then mm -hmm. I needed to understand acting. So then I, I went to Televisa and, and they offered me, it's like, they offered me scholarship to study in the acting school of Televisa. Mm -hmm. And I studied there for for a whole like year uh, in a s intense workshop of acting and, you know, learning how to deal with the cameras and all that. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. people like, like it a lot, you know, what I did and, and my, the way that I perform and all that. So they offered me a big opportunity there, but then I realized, you know, Televisa is soap opera. Mm -hmm, yep. So, so then I'm like, well, man, if I'm already here, I, I, back to uh, I, outside of my country and far and, and, and I'm just going for it. I got to be honest and I got to stay truth. Mm -hmm. And I'm not here to be an actor and to be soap opera. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want to do action. So that where I have to go is to LA, to Hollywood. You know, I want to be there. I want to, you know, try it. Mm -hmm. And I just, after I was already doing good in Mexico, kind of like, you know, doing some modeling and uh, commercials and try to work in whatever I can to just stay there. I was doing very good. Mm -hmm. 
and I had this big offer from Televisa to stay there and be, you know, working in Televisa and making like soap operas, then I said, I got to say no. And I said, look, everybody thought that I was crazy. You know, I was like, oh, man, <laughs> the offer that you received, you were the only student that received this offer. Yep. You know, and I'm like, you know, yes, but, you know, I don't want to be, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a martial artist. I, I love martial arts. That's mm-hmm. what I want to do. I, in soap operas, they don't even... It's not going to happen, you know. So mm-hmm. I left to L.A. and I arrived here and I start from zero again and start working, at, you know, in everything. Waiter, dishwasher, whatever it could I could work to, to cover my bills and, and to be able to, to be here. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and, and suddenly I start training in different gyms until I got to a place where they were doing uh, a lot of stunt people train from the mm-hmm. stunt industry. Mm-hmm. And that's how I got my first job as a stuntman in the movie Hard as Nails in, uh, of Roger Corman. Mm. You know, and then also Andy Chang saw me in this gym and they and he offered me to be the stunt double for The Rock mm-hmm. in The Rundown. Oh, the Rundown, yep, yep, I knew that. <clears throat> and then that's how that's how basically it started for me. Then, you know, I went back to Chile and I realized, said, you know what, I don't want to do stunts because... Mm-hmm. Usually, you do you you when you're stuntman in the movie. The sometimes the less you do is martial arts. You mm-hmm. gotta fall. You do high falls. You do uh, stuff like that, like uh, different, like driving a car, running, mm-hmm. doing like it's the craziest. Like the 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 the, the stunt world and the stunt industry is incredible industry and is a great industry. But mm-hmm. as a martial artist what I wanted to do is do my martial arts. You see, so some, so sometimes you're in a movie and you don't even, you're a six month or three month or four month working in the movie and you don't need to do a one kick. You don't need to do anything. So you just need to be there walking, falling. So it's like, you know what? It's not what I want to do. So Mm -hmm. it was a beautiful experience. And I tried to learn as much as I could from Andy Chang because Andy Chang is a master, the guru of action and fighting and all that. Were, you know, right-hand side of Jackie Chan. It was an incredible experience. Mm-hmm. So I went back to Chile. And with that little money that I got from the rundown, I started, you know, and I, I decided to do my first movie in Chile, Kill Troll. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which is and, a really awesome movie. <laughs> oh, thank you, man. And, and I tried to apply everything that I've learned from Andy about how to deal with the action scenes, the rehearsals, the stunts. I have to. I did a big audition in my country to select like a team of like ten guys mm-hmm. that I could train and and show them what is, you know, to do martial arts in the in front of the camera. After all the experience that I got from from Andy and working with him, I tried to mimic that and. That's how K- Kiltra came out, mm-hmm. you know. That's crazy. It, it, it's crazy um, how in life you have like these like windows and opportunities that pop up, and uh, and you either have the guts to like take take them or not. And um, the fact how you just like kind of uprooted your life and just went for it. I mean, that's amazing. Um, and a lot of times, like when you want to do something, like when you follow your gut, like I've experienced this also, like. Uh, like he said, people thought you were crazy for not taking that opportunity for like the, the Spanish like novellas and stuff. And um, but I know like you knew in your heart, you know, what your path was and uh, and it all worked out. That's pretty amazing. So, Marco, um, what's your favorite movie or like project you've worked on so far? Wow, that's a tricky question, man. <laughs> you know, because every movie and everything you do. Especially when when you're involved on like for example my movies in Chile is are like your child man you know like you really like there's such in such uh, so much energy and and and, and memories uh, that it's hard to like select them or, or qualify them you know when mm-hmm. when you are part of the creation from the beginning from all the process but um, being yeah. You know, like like movies in Chile, it's very hard, you know, because it's like they're so, they did so much for for me in terms of experience, in in terms of living beautiful moments, sharing with people, with kids, you know, when, when, for example, Mirage Man, we did all the advertisement of that movie, 
you know, I was dressed as Mirage Man and I was walking into different towns in my country, going <laughs> to the awesome. roof of the building and, and people were taking so it's a beautiful connection with with kids and with people. So each movie has a, such a great value, in, uh, you know, for me that mm -hmm. it's the same here. The movie that I'm going to see today, I've never been into India. Mm -hmm. Work That was my first Bollywood movie. Beautiful experience. You know, wow. it's like... I just, you know, it's such a magic. So it's hard. It's hard to, to answer this. Oh, you know, this is my favorite movie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, as a character, if you ask me, I will, I will better answer you this. Mm -hmm. I really like the character of Solo, of this, the series from Dust Till Dawn, man. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you ask awesome. me, if you ask, okay, this is a, this is a, this is a good question. <laughs> what character will you like? to develop like more movies or a series or, or a continuation. I think like a spin-off. Oh my God, man. Solo, you gotta, you're going to see this character, man. He's such a cool character, man. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And oh, of course, working with Robert, you know, he, he flew in, you know, to, to direct and to, to, to shoot my, my episode, the, the one that I, that, that my character was all, all over the place. Mm -hmm. And it was just epic, man. Imagine working with Robert, you know, someone that you admire. Oh, he's and, so talented. Yeah. And, and, you know, he was the one that actually we studied with my friend in Chile to do our low budget movies in Chile because you know, we were all about, okay, if we want to do this, we got to learn how to do everything. We got to, we just cannot be, we need, and then we study El Mariachi, you know, we study his, his career. And well, mm -hmm. my friend director is a big fan of Robert, you know, he means, you know, he, he's very like, a, a, you know, he's a cool director that follow his footsteps, you know? So mm -hmm. imagine after many, many years, you know, being, doing a, Awesome fucking character, man. <laughs> being, directed, being directed by him, you know, it's just incredible, man. Mm -hmm. It just, so, I'm so happy that this this just happened, though. So I'm yeah. so looking forward to see those episodes and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. hopefully, who knows, you know, continue doing more more stuff with the character, you know. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, Marco. I'm really happy for you. Um, this is, uh, I have a question for you, and um, I would love to to see you involved with this. So <clears throat> would you like to be uh involved with any uh Marvel films, Marvel Disney because like Avengers and all these superhero films are so huge right now and I think you would you would fit perfectly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know what? It's of course, everything that comes that is part of a project where there's physicality, martial arts and you can like share with people all that it's it's nice you know but like i said it's like i'm in a moment right now man that i don't know if you can understand this but i'm so happy man i'm so thankful i'm so grateful of of what's going on with me right now and mm -hmm. and i'm just enjoying it and i'm just trying to be don't fall into that asking for more all the time mm -hmm. trying to like wish and wish this and wish that and i i'm trying not to fall in that because that's when you stop appreciating things. And that's when you stop uh, really enjoying what you have and doing everything with passion. You mm -hmm. see, mm -hmm. uh, right now, what I have really, uh, and what I'm doing really, you know, I just finished this series. It's a life character. All what I can say that the character, he don't die. <laughs> <I'm gonna say laughs> anything else. So there is a, a million opportunities of that character to stay alive on the world of, of El Rey Network and, and, and Robert's world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he's a beautiful character. Like when you, when you, when you see that character, you're going to understand the way that he looks and all that is like a barbarian. Is a, is a Jawar warrior, mm -hmm. you know, Aztec Jawar warrior that comes, that trains in hell and he's have a code of honor that mm -hmm. he respects. And it's such a, a spiritual and such a cool character that, mm -hmm. You know, it's like I'm so thankful and happy for it. Then mm -hmm. another and another thing that I'm doing, I'm doing another movie with Scott. I just fit. I'm finishing shooting right now. Uh, next week is my our last days, mm -hmm. and I'm doing. You know, having this great experience with this great director Jesse Johnson that we're doing. A, you know that I'm like kind of like the lead of the movie with Scott and mm -hmm. such a different character I was able to do before. So. I'm so happy, man. And yes, of course, like 
of course marvel is huge and the superhero movies are are crazy it's like of course i would love to be part of that you know but i don't want to get it i don't want to put it in the top of my head saying oh this is my priority and if i don't do that i'm not going to accomplish anything or mm -hmm. you know don't get too crazy about it it's just mm -hmm. if it happens I'm ready, man, and I'm, you know, I'll do my best like I always do. You know, I always try to give my 100% in everything that I am and put all the passion and the heart on it, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's an awesome uh, mindset, um, you know, that you're sharing with the fans and everything. And, like, kind of like the key to happiness, like you said, like living in a moment and, and enjoying what you have and not worried about what everybody else is doing. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, because you, because you become slave of what you really wish for. And we, what you really, at the end, man, it, this is so this is so crazy. It's like nothing, nobody can guarantee us anything. Mm -hmm. We live life and we've been told to live life thinking that we're never going to die, thinking that we have the life guaranteed. And this is not true. Mm -hmm. You know, we can, you know, we never know what could happen mm -hmm. to anybody. Like mm -hmm. it's crazy. So when you when you really think about this and not just not just think as of you know ah yeah this is the typical thing no 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 like just stop for a moment and think about this <laughs> then when you really do this your your decisions in life start changing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you start making different decisions from a different part of yourself mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know not from your mind because we are not our mind you know we are not just our mind you know, and our mind will make us make decisions that is based on what we see in TV, is based on what we we will learn when we were kids, is based on maybe traumas, on fears. So basically, the decisions that we, we're making all the time are based on all this influence. You know, are based on you know uh, things that happens you know and then we just don't want to repeat the same thing that happened but mm -hmm. it's not really that we're not our mind is always trying to put fear in our decisions mm -hmm. it is always mm -hmm. trying to jeopard like to how do you say when interrupt the process of listen to your to to yourself or to mm -hmm. you who you really are and and that's all this happens when you start understanding that the only real thing is now and is the present and that we're going to die and we, and we really going to die mm -hmm. in any moment. And when we understand this is different, everything changes, you mm -hmm. see? So for me, that's why it's like, you know, well, man, if it, this, if it didn't happen, it was because no, it was not meant for me. And that's it. And, mm -hmm. and move on and just enjoy, enjoy what you have. You see, mm -hmm. it, it's that man, you know, it's like, it's hard today because we've been sold on, on what is success. Oh yeah. I want to be successful. Successful mean to have this, to have a house and a car and a mm -hmm. change your car. Every it's year. an illusion. Huh? It's all like an illusion. It's an illusion. Mm -hmm. It's an illusion, you know, and, and they sell us this very good mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. since we're kids. You yep. see the kids, the advertisements in the in the in the kids when you're when you know they put them watch TV. They 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 set their minds off for that, and mm -hmm. and that's not success. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, people will not understand this until they're mm -hmm. and they they feel miserable having money and without having money. They feel mm -hmm. the same miserable having the big house, the cars, and everything that they <laughs> thought that once they get it, they know they they gonna be happy, and they're not happy. Mm -hmm. And now, then, they, and unfortunately, lo they lost all their life trying to collect all these things, mm -hmm. thinking, and they lost their life mm -hmm. because you don't buy with the life with money. You buy with the life mm -hmm. that it took you to make that money to buy the things. Mm -hmm. So at the end, is what you want to spend your life, how you want to spend your life. So yes, I'm not saying no money is bad. I'm saying you don't want to get tricked into this thing and you want to be you you want to use this money and these elements that were given in life to help for you to be happier to be yes to to have the basics to you know we all want i'm not saying go to a to a to a woods and just meditate or whatever i'm not I'm <laughs> yeah. just, you know i'm against yeah. that i'm just saying Ha you don't need as much as you think mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as much as they make you think you yeah. just do the everything you can to have 
the basics you need to be happy and to have time to enjoy, to mm -hmm. do what you love to do. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the most important thing. And that's what's going to make you happy. That's, that's the, the thing that I can say, you know. Yeah, I have a similar mindset, Marco, because um, I always say, like, <clears throat> if you chase material things or money, like, someone's always going to have a nicer car. Someone's always going to have a bigger house. Someone's always going to have a, a, a bigger bank account. Um, like, success to me is, like, you know, achieving your personal goals. And uh, if you're doing what you love and what you're passionate about and, you know, spending time with family and loved ones. So uh, I'm on the same page as you. Um I try not to think about what everybody else is doing, you know, even like with working out and fitness, like, you know, I'm big into fitness and, um, you know, I do what I'm capable of, you know, and I'm happy with myself. And, and if somebody, uh, you know, can deadlift a thousand pounds, oh, great for them. You know, I'm, I'm really happy for them, but like, I personally don't focus on other people. I focus on myself. So I agree with you a hundred percent. Exactly, man. And this way, you know, that's why also for me, competition you know, I'm a very competitive person, I realize, but it's a competition against myself, you mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and every time that passed by, I'm like, st I start to understand like competition sometimes is why someone have to lose and someone have to win. Mm -hmm. You know, like we can all, we can all win. We can all help each other. We can all have, you know, uh, a good experience in this life. Mm -hmm. It's not like, Oh, you know, you cannot shine because I'm not going to shine if you shine. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, this is, I see this a lot and it's not like that. You know, it's just not, we are not, we cannot control that. Mm -hmm. If, if it's my turn to, to do stuff and to, to work or whatever, that doesn't mean that it's not going to be yours. Mm -hmm. You see, it's like, and this applies for everything. So, yep. One thing that I've learned also, Marco, is like everybody like has their gifts, you know, and, uh, you know, like like physically, like some people are going to be better swimmers and, you know, maybe somebody's a better swimmer than you, but maybe you're a better climber, you know, maybe you run uh, further. So uh, that's another thing. <clears throat> yeah, and it's because we're unique. Mm -hmm. You got to understand each of us is unique and has a special, you know, uniqueness since we're born. And, and that is us. You know, that would, that will make us different of like, of if not every martial artist that do a roundhouse kick will be the same. No, mm -hmm. because the way I do roundhouse kick is different than the way that the other guy do roundhouse kick. Mm -hmm. That make me, that make me unique. Mm -hmm. Like maybe I don't do, uh, I don't know, a hook kick, but I do a uh, outside crescent kick and mm -hmm. my kick is going to be different. The way, you know, it, it's, I'm, I look different. I, mm -hmm. I it's, you got to understand that each of us are is unique and you got to believe this and that unique uniqueness is such a powerful and um, beautiful too it's beautiful that exactly mm -hmm. and you got to understand and you got to learn how to to appreciate that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so Marco, we're, um, we're like past the 30 minute mark and I don't want to take too much more of your time. Um, but lastly, um, just one more question. Do you have any message for your fans out there and anything they should look out for like projects? Yeah, well, I have, um, you know, I'm doing this movie with, uh, with, uh, well, my, I'll tell them about my last stuff that is coming out. I have a, I just did a movie named The Green Ghost that is an American movie with that I have a really good fight scene with Cain Velasquez and with Andy Chang. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's a yeah, pretty former cool. UFC heavyweight champ. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a cool. Is it like a it's a family movie, you know, very cool. Then, you know, well, you got you can't miss from Dust Till Dawn my character solo. Mm -hmm. It's going to come it's going to start I think in September. Mm -hmm. Uh well, invite them to see uh, Sultan, the movie in, that I did in Bollywood that it just released now. Mm -hmm. And of course, this I'm looking forward, This we've done some great stuff in this last movie, um, Savage Dog with mm -hmm. Scott Atkins. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, so it's uh, me versus Scott, number two. <laughs> you and Scott, that's a winning team right there, man. Because Undisputed 3, like that movie blew me away. And I always tell people, because I'm a big movie guy, and I say, you want to see one of the best fighting action movies ever undisputed three wow that's cool you know well this is different because it's a time piece so the style of fighting is gonna is totally different like there's some weapons there's it's a it's a different you know i'm not saying bad worse or better but i'm saying it's a really different so people will really enjoy it you know the characters the time 
everything is, is such a different project. So I'm really looking forward for it. You know, it's a very cool character that I have. And, you know, Jesse is being really cool to work with him, you know. So, mm-hmm. yeah, man. And and that's it. And and also, you know, well, we don't have, many, like you said, much time, uh, unfortunately. But, you know, if people are listening, they should look also into nutrition. I mm-hmm. think it's goes hand in hand with performance. Mm-hmm. It's very important, you know, to 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 have a good to eat good, you know, to recover and all that is very very important. I'm really into nutrition too, so maybe another day if you if you have time we can we can talk about it. 